Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, back on the road again. Just north of Cincinnati, heading on in, into Cincinnati today. It's, it's early yet. It's about a quarter till noon. And from the road, I bring you greetings, my friends. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua. And I welcome you back to the podcast here. Let me lay this thing down. You know, this morning I was listening to uh, some of the Christian radio as I was driving down from Columbus, heading down into Cincinnati. And they had this fellow on here, and he was, uh, oh, he was talking about how Christ was the fulfillment of your life, and and, and it was going to make you this and give you that. And it was like... Uh, Going to church was like going to the, to the to the Walmart, and you could just pick out anything you wanted. It was all about you, all about us. And he just went on with the spiel of self-esteem and all this. I, I tell you the truth, it almost sounded a little bit more like uh, back when I was in college and taking Psych 101 with Jesus thrown in every now and then, you know, just to get an amen from the audience. Uh, and that's kind of what it was like, and, and I was... To be quite honest, I was just getting ready to throw up, you know. (laughs) Uh, I just couldn't imagine. And then I was drawn back into to to thought by uh, by the Spirit when he started to make his closing prayer, and he and he and he went, "Our Father." And I thought at first how cheaply. We throw that term around these days. How how little understanding or thought goes behind it. it it's uh, it's simply an address and a term, like "Hey Joe." Almost, it, it's something that just flows out of the lips without any real thought given to the impact of what they just said. Our Father, and in the spirit, my mind was drawn back to the. Uh, to the phrase in the Bible, and we all know where it is. It's it's there where the disciples asked our Lord to teach them how to pray. And as he first began, the opening is is simply a mere address, "Our Father who art in heaven." And it sounds so simple to us today, but what we don't realize is it was absolutely revolutionary in its day. It was one of the reasons why the Pharisees. Accused, accused Christ of blasphemy against the name of God. You see, the Jews had always been a very formal people when it came to the laws of God. And right in the Ten Commandments, um, commandments, excuse me, there is a reference there, one of the commandments of not to take the Lord's name in vain. And so they were very, very judicious in their use of the Lord's name. And they had gotten all kinds of ways around using the name of God. And the idea of having a intimate, personal relationship on a father-son level was completely foreign to the Jewish thought and the Jewish way of life. Everything that had been taught in their synagogues, in their temple by their priests and the Pharisees and all the others this was totally foreign. It was the first time. If you go back and you look in scriptures, you will not find a single instance where someone addressed Almighty God as my Father, our Father. Now, there were references to Him as Father. But this whole address and idea of, the, of sonship with Almighty God was something that came with our Lord. It revolutionized the whole idea of a personal relationship with God. But unfortunately, what it didn't do is change the heart of men when they saw this reference. And it rapidly became within the church, and you see it today, it's been that way ever since. Almost like, our Father who will give me this. 
our Father who will do this for me, almost like a, a blank credit card that you can take to God, and, and as long as the, the blood is on it, you get whatever you want. And we see that today. We see it everywhere, and, and, and it, uh, it absolutely disgusts me because it's not what was meant here, and it's not ever what was even thought of here. This was more than just a prayer. You have to understand this in a whole different light if you want to have an impact on the way you address and live your life with Almighty God. My friends, what our Lord gave us here was not just a template for intimacy with God. My friends, it was a whole new paradigm for life. Now you've heard me say many times, and you've heard Zeph and other people that I listen to say it also, that this whole thing, if you're a Lamb of God, is not about us. It's all about God. And if you look at the prayer template laid out by our Lord, you can see that clearly. The opening sentence, the address, he tells us of a new and changed relationship. One of son and father. The very act of Almighty God becoming our father tells us of the character the mercy and the love of Almighty God. It tells us of His concern of us as individuals because we are saved individually. But it tells us also something else. It tells us that God is first. He is the opening. He is the address. He is what has drawn us here to begin with. And then as we go on through the prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We instantly are to recognize his glory and the presence of his glory when we are drawn to him. Not the grace and the glory that we bring ourselves. Hallowed be his name. There is no glory attached to our name. Ego must be left at the door, my friends, slain on the way in. Thy will be done. It's all about God. Not until we get four or five verses in is there any mention of us or our need. What our Lord presented here was a paradigm shift of the faith. A paradigm shift that a lamb needs to come to understand. I hear a lot of talk, a lot of complaining these days about things that are going on within our country. I hear it from lambs, I hear it from people who aren't lambs. They all seem to be concerned about losing their stuff, losing this, losing that. And I want to shout, my friends, this or that is nothing. God is everything. Do you not understand? The blessings you got from Him were for His glory, not yours. If they are taken away, it takes nothing away from you. When we look at this new paradigm that our Lord gave us, Yes, we ask for our daily needs, but we were restricted to asking for the needs of that day. God wants a continual relationship. Nowhere in the Word does it tell us to ask God to give us a retirement benefit or a yacht or, or, or mass, any of these kind of things that you see become a part of the American dream. That is nowhere to be found. What is to be found it's a constant daily walk, an interdependency, a community almost of two that expands. But it must first be that instant, or not instant, that intimate, that intimate relationship of a son to a father. That bond first must be established. We see it here in the prayer of our Lord. And it angers me so much when I hear people who are taking this 
and totally destroying not only the context but the whole paradigm of what he is saying here and they they turn it around as if this is our open season to get whatever we want to make us happy to satisfy our flesh to tickle our ears and I hear these people preaching to crowds of thousands and they get cheers when they say things like this and it is remarkable to me that these people even imagine that they understand what it is to be a son of the living God do you know the Apostle John when he wrote what how, what marvel is this that we should be considered the sons of the living God? Now, I may have mishandled that quote. I'm driving. I can't actually stop and look it up. But the thought, the thought is there. He was astonished. Literally astonished that he could be considered a child of the living God and that he could go to God and address him openly as Father. And this was a man who grew up in the faith of the living God. This was a man who understood scriptures. And yet, even after three years in his direct ministry with the Lord, and all that he saw, yet to his dying day was he astonished at this fact. My friends, and I know I'm rambling on a little bit here, I'm going to stop, I'm getting close to a restaurant here, I'll stop and perhaps be back on later. Uh, but uh, I'm just amazed at the cavalier attitude that I see, not only within the body of Christ, but within those who claim the leadership of Christ. Uh, the cavalier attitude that they have toward this intimate relationship that he has given to us. My friends, this is nothing we have done. And because this relationship exists does not mean we deserve anything better than every other man. As a matter of fact, what it means is that we are to take up the life of Christ within us and take on the task that he assigns to us without worry about our sufficiency, without worry about whether we have a new car or a large house or all of the things that you see these preachers telling people to ask for and claim in the name of God. What audacity to call God your living Father, walk out and lay claim to something as if he owed you.
what I never dreamed of was the uh, circumstances that would have transpired between the time I left you and the time I have come back. I look at my clock here and it's uh, 4.54. I'm heading back home to Columbus, left Cincinnati and went through Wilmington. I'm about 20, oh, 25 miles out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me, my friends. I'm about 25 miles out and uh, this is, of course, December 14th, 2012, and it's now another day that we'll live in, uh, in tragic memory within all of our minds and within our hearts. All of us are in a, some kind of state of shock, I suppose, right now. Uh, the vast majority of us have children and grandchildren, and even those who don't. We are again a, a nation stunned into unbelief and grief by the events that have transpired today in uh, that schoolhouse in Connecticut. I can only say a couple of things, you know, I mean, the facts are still coming out. It appears to be a story that is bigger even yet than the... Uh, than what happened at the schoolyard. There are other bodies turning up and there are other people that are apparently missing and uh, it will all come out. But what is clear to us now is that, that this was an act of monstrous evil, something beyond the comprehension of any of us. <clears throat> Even the worlders are having a difficult time dealing with this. Of course, their answers in the field of psychiatry and psychology will leave them, leave them entirely empty. <clears throat> you know, I'm just a uh, teacher of the word. Men who have a greater gift and a greater wisdom than me will speak on this and begin to bring understanding, perhaps, if understanding can be found. I can say only this, my friends, <clears throat> that everything we see about us, everything we experience, all of our lives, all of history, everything we know of, is all a part of a grand story grand story in the heart of Almighty God, a story that began eons ago back in the midst of eternity when he created a being, a being of light because it was created in his image and he loved this being and he had great plans though he knew he knew the weaknesses inherent within the being he had created, yet those weaknesses were there for a reason. He knew there was a fall to come and a steep price to pay for redemption, but his love was so strong that he willingly paid the price to complete his grand plan and his story of the ages, that a being had been created to share eternity with Almighty God. And my friends, all of history is a part of this story. And our time that we spend here on this earth, passing through this wilderness, if you be a Lamb of God, is, I guess, so to speak, the crucible of your being. This is where we are formed in many ways into the shape that God desires. This is where all of these incidents we see around us, all of these things that weigh on our hearts, God uses them in some way to shape and mold us. And I know that all things are working according to this story that he has laid open before us in the living word, in his living son, 
and that he has shared with us in his living spirit. And that though I do not understand the individual parts and the interactions of all of those parts, I understand that as a child of the living God, these things are working their part in creating me to be what he would want us to be. So my friends, never lose sight of the fact that all of this, as I said earlier in the message, is meant to reinforce to us that this is all about him and his story. We are only such a tiny part in it as he gives us a role to play and calls us out from the rest of it. Trust in him, my friends. Draw close to him. For I fear these kind of things are going to become more frequent rather than less. And that perhaps they will be used to bring on some of the restrictions that we have all feared would be coming on ahead of us. You know that one of the things that my mind flashed back to today. I remember sitting in class at uh, East Main Street Elementary School in uh, Whitehall, Ohio. I was in the fifth grade. It was, uh, I think it was 1960, but it could have been 1959. We were there in the morning already to go, and our teacher, Mrs. Fisher, I don't know why I remember her name, but I do. She walked in that morning, and, and she was kind of staggered, you could see. And she almost coughed, and, and that is she, she started to speak. And we were used to saying the Lord's Prayer every day. We did that right the first thing we'd got into school. It had always been that way, every school I'd ever been in. Uh, so it felt absolutely normal. But she informed us that day that there wouldn't be any more prayers in school that the Supreme Court had said that uh, prayer in school was illegal. And she, in her housewifey kind of way, because that's the way teachers looked back then, they were, and most of them were housewives, uh, they were not very well paid, I don't think, and, and uh, it was kind of a secondary income for the families. But in her way of, I guess there was even a kind of innocence, she says, I think we will regret the day that we ever did something like this. Interesting, I think, that my mind would be drawn back to that by what happened today. Interesting, to say the least. You know, my friends, I think we are only now, 50 years later, after Mrs. Fisher has long gone on to meet our Lord. I think only now we're coming to realize the full force of what she had to say that morning. And she did say it with such simple eloquence, yet it has stuck in my mind all these years. And today simply brought it back to light again. So my friends, as we move forward from this and forward we must go. God has ordained line moves on and we must move on with it. What this tells us, what this reminds us of, is what we have been telling you for years that Brother Thomas, me, Govinda, and others that I don't know of, that it's not about us, my friends. It's about him his story, his life, his plan. Our only refuge, my friends, is in him. Seek the living God, my friends, if you do not know him, if you feel his call upon your heart at all. But there is our only path, my friends. If that is uh, not the answer you seek, I have no help for you.
I don't really know what else to say about uh, about what happened today, my friends. As the rest of you, I'm still a little bit numb and in shock and, and find it very hard to believe. Though yet in my spirit, I sense a great sadness. But I also understand that all is in God's hands. All is in His control. Not a single instant, not a single day is out of His control. We trust in the living God. We live in the living God. We walk with the living God. My friends have confidence in the living God. Amen. Well, there'll be uh, music on the show today. I'm not sure what I'm going to play. My mind is still spinning a little bit from all that's going on. Uh, we'll open with, uh, do you get it now? I'm not sure what we'll close with. Uh, I'll choose something later. The music, as always, will be provided by Zeph and Trish Daniel, and I do appreciate them so very much. And I'm quite sure Zeph will have much more to say on what has transpired today and and what it means and all that. He is much more equipped, much more better equipped to deal with this than I am. His gifting is of a different nature, and his calling as well. Zeph's music can be found at soundcloud dash or slash zedja.com. That's soundcloud slash zedja.com. And all of Zeph's all of Zeph's ministry can be found at zedja.poppy.com. Well my friends, on this day that we will long remember now, a day of grief, a day of mourning. I bid you adieu in the name of our living, living Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. Until you seek Him, in Him you will find consolation. In Him you will find wisdom. In Him you will find love. For it says in the Word, back before the beginnings of time as we know it, when the earth was barely habitable, it said, I, t I rejoiced in the habitable parts of the earth and his great joy in life was with the sons of men. We are safe with the living God. Goodbye, my friends.